presence is here. He has already set the atmosphere. Amen. You guys ready for the word? I know you are. Let's get a hallelujah shout and let's send it to the nations. Amen. You ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. That sounded good. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, I just need you to step your game up. That's it. I just need you to step your game up. Y'all ready? Here it is. One, two, three. Hallelujah. All right. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here and thank you for um, having a welcoming presence about yourself, you know, because God doesn't show up like that if we don't have those hearts to welcome him. Amen. And, and I know that that's what's going on in this place. Amen. We got hearts to welcome the Lord. Amen. We can welcome him and let God bring transforming power into our lives. Amen. Amen. Look at your name and say, today's a great day. All right. Look at him and say, now get ready for it to get better. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for blessing us, giving us uh, another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, get your Bible out. All right. Um, you know, we've been preaching this series here for Sundays entitled, Shall We Go? Shall We Go? And we're going to preach part four this morning, Shall We Go? Part four. I'm just getting right into it because we've had a wonderful time of prayer. And did you guys enjoy that worship? I mean, that just, man, that presence, amen. I really just, uh, I was helped by that myself, amen. I was helped by that by myself. So um, let's just continue to be open to be used by God in a wonderful way. So shall we go, number four, and we started this out by talking about the harvest. You know, there's a plentiful harvest out there. There's plenty of people that need the help that God has to give them. Um, but shall we go? And so the subtitle of this morning's message is, Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, send me. Would you guys say that by faith? Come on, just say it. Say, Here I am, Lord. Really? Do you mean it? Hmm. Not letting everybody else know where you are. you saying, Here I am, Lord, send me. And so if God sends you, now you're going to be sent with his assignment and not the assignment of the world. Amen. I want everybody to know that God wants to use you, but the question is, are you available? Amen. God wants to use you, but the question is, are you available? Now let's go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 3. And when we get there, we're going to go to... Um, Verse, well, let me see. Let me get over there. Genesis chapter 3, and verse 8. And we know Genesis chapter 3, that's the chapter where, you know, uh, Satan deceived Eve and, you know, man, this is, the, this is where it all starts to fall apart. <laughs> Amen. So it went from the blessing and everything good to, oh, man, really? So now let's pick up on verse 8. Um, so we know that they had already uh, eaten of the fruit and all of a sudden now they know that, you know, their eyes are open and they can see all this stuff. But verse eight and in the King James, Genesis three, eight in the King James. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Man, can you imagine that? Hearing the voice of the Lord. Well, see, it wasn't terrifying to them before because they've been used to it. And so now if we look at it here, he says, and they heard the voice of the Lord of the Lord God in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, what'd they do? Man, so like what we experience today in worship helps us to understand that God is not looking to do us any harm. Amen. I mean, this is safe, right? This is something that's good, but yet 
The enemy, through deception, wants you to run away from what you actually need. Amen. And so they hid themselves. Adam and his wife, they hid themselves from what? So what was all this today? It's all about the presence of God. And that's what we need more of in our lives. But man is still following the pattern of a fallen man. And there are many still today living the effects of Adam. They're living and experiencing life after Adam. That is the fallen man. But now, come on, Jesus came to be the new Adam, amen, so that we can be restored. And so God doesn't want us running from his very presence because his presence is actually what we need. And so now they hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees in the garden. In verse 9, and the Lord, call, Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Now, how many know God knew where he was? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Come on. How many know God knows where you are? Amen. I mean, you can't you, listen. You can hide and you can fool some people. And, you know, some people you can just trick them by not taking their calls. You know what I'm saying? They don't really know what's going on. If you don't talk to them, they have no idea. God knows. Some of y'all say, well, I'm just not going to be seen by anybody. God sees you already. And so he said, where art thou? Now, what we need to understand is they hid themselves from God. They called themselves hiding from God. But what they're really doing is running away from God. And why? Because they didn't obey him. And so sin brings guilt and shame. Sin brings guilt and shame Causing people to run away from God. Running away from, have you ever, don't raise your hand, but maybe you know somebody, you know they've been running from God. They've been running from God. And see, that's what sin will do. It brings guilt and shame, causing people to run away from God. Man was never created to live life outside of the presence of God. Do you know that? This is why people will often try to fill that hole, they try to fill that void with whatever they can find. Come on, whether it be other people, whether it be substance, whether it be uh, becoming a workaholic or whatever, they try to fill this void because they were not created to be in this earth outside of the presence of God. And so many people are walking around with this big, giant hole and nothing can fill it. Nothing can bring the satisfaction and the peace. Only God. Amen. Only God. And so once again, that sin brings guilt and shame, causing people to run away from God. Man was never. I'm telling you, God created us and we're these complex beings and we can do so many things. But we were not supposed to be down here without him. That was never the plan at all. Amen. And so verse nine, he says, where art thou? Now, we know that God knew where he was. But he wanted see, God knew where both of them was, but he wanted them to acknowledge where they were. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to help you up in here. See, God knows where you're at. He already knows. But he's going to give you a chance to acknowledge where you're at. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all need to come to the place in your life and say, uh, I'm lost. Yeah. Don't keep trying to hide from God. Don't keep trying to pull the wools over, wool over, how you say that saying? Wool of, wool of, cubs over your head, wool over something. Wool over your eyes. Amen. <laughs> Whatever it is. You know what I mean? That's like, you know, you're a kid and you're playing hide and go seek. And then, you know, one of the kids that ain't really advanced at it, you know, they'll go hide somewhere like behind the curtains. Like, man, we see your shoes. <laughs> you're exposed. That's not a good hiding place. And so the thing is, is God knew where they were, but he just wanted them to acknowledge. We out here, man. We done messed up. See, that's what God wants people to do in the church. He wants them to realize, listen, he's not trying to have you come to him with it all fixed and figured out. He just wants you to recognize 
I'm lost. He knows where you are. Amen. And so he said, where art thou? And you know what? He just really wanted them to acknowledge that they were outside of his presence. Now, let me help you with something. When you step outside of his presence, now you're disconnected from purpose. And so now when you're disconnected to purpose, I don't care what you do. You're not going to be happy. Everything you do will be temporary at best. You will be on the roller coaster of emotional highs and lows, and it will be a struggle for you because you've disconnected from purpose. Amen. Amen. And God does not want you to stay out there. Because the life God has for you is in here, and I'm talking about in his presence, and that's that's what he wants. And so the problem is, is Satan wants to blind you and keep you from the power you need to prevail. And so that's what happens. People mess up what we've been saying over here. If you mess up, fess up, get blessed up. Amen. I mean, quit playing. But what happens is people mess up and start running. <laughs> Wait a minute. You mess up and start running. Where are you running? The wrong way. And guess what? Now you're out there and you get lost. And sometimes you can't find your way back. And then you want to find your way back and then the devil will bombard you. Well, you've been gone too long now. They don't recognize you no more. You better just stay out here. Amen? But all along, God is saying, you're not going to make it. Now remember, they heard the voice of God in the cool of the day. So when you are able to kind of get a visual of this, I don't know if you get that visual. I get the visual. It's not this loud, thundering voice. Why does God have to thunder and bring this loud voice when he's a God of peace? So I believe he was walking. I mean, when you think of the words cool of the day, doesn't that make you kind of feel like that might have been a relaxing atmosphere? Anybody? You ever thought about this? That's probably it does not seem like it was chaotic and come on, everything just all over the place. Weeds overgrown, everything crazy. Come on. It seemed like it was just a pleasant place. And so they would hear God's voice. And God said, here I am. Now, sometimes we're expecting God to speak so loudly and boldly. And you know what? What happens is we don't hear him and he's talking all along, but he's the one that's the quiet voice because he's got the peace. He's got the answers. And so now everything else is so loud because it's trying to distract you. It's trying to keep you from hearing the voice of reason, the voice that has the answers. And so you hear everything else magnified. And that's because the enemy is trying his best to keep you from the power you actually need to prevail. Amen. Because, see, he'll say, keep swimming. God will say, come up for air. The devil will say, keep going. God will say, stop. Come on. The enemy will say, keep working. God will say, go to church. Oh, come on, somebody. The enemy will say, come on, work another shift. God will say, go to church. Why? Because you're running out of energy. You're running out of strength because the end of yourself is coming soon. God knows this. And God says, but I'm here to help you. I want to reconnect you with purpose. Amen? Amen? I want to reconnect you with purpose. So the enemy says, run. Amen? He says, run. God says, come. Come in. The enemy says, okay, that didn't work for you. Go to another one. He didn't work for you. Get another one. She didn't work. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all don't want me to just preach it right down there where it is, where your street. Y'all want me to come on your street? You know what I mean? That didn't work for you. He didn't work for you. They didn't work for you. Whatever. And you run into, and God is saying, come. 
Come where? Come here. Amen. You know, when you've been firm with your kids, you say, come here. Well, see, God, some people are waiting for God to get all like that. God wants you to come freely. Come freely. And he's saying, the enemy is saying, run. After all, you done gone too far now anyway. Y'all remember the story of the prodigal son? He was out there, man. He said, I want to get my inheritance. And I'm about to go out here and do my thing. Well, glory to God. Here's the news flash. Every one of y'all trying to do your thing, you're going to get tired after a while. Yeah. <laughs> your thing that you're doing ain't going to last that long. And so what happened with the prodigal son, he came to the end of himself, and then he starts saying, well, you know what? I might as well be a, shoot, I might as well work with the animals or something. I'm just paraphrasing. But he was willing to take on the job of a servant. But guess what? God welcomed him back and put him back in position. And so this is what's really going on. Situations of life cause people to step out of position. And when God is saying, where art thou? He knows where you are. But the question is, do you know where you are? And are you willing to say, I'm out of position, Lord? But I want to come back. See? See? Don't be out of position and trying to find some other people to co-sign for you. Come on out there. You know what? Glory to God. Egyptians ain't going to tell you to leave Egypt. Now, I'm not speaking about modern day Egypt. I'm speaking about ancient Egypt. Glory to God. They're not telling you to leave. Lost people are not trying to push you to no light. They're not trying to tell you, you're right. You need to. No, no. They're going to say, it's fine over here. What you doing? Bring some of your friends over here. Amen? But God, all the while, he wants to get you back because he has a purpose. Listen, every one of us is created by divine design. We didn't just end up here. But God created us, and he did this before we were ever even in our mother's womb. God already had a plan, a predestined thing that he wants to do with your life. But the enemy is trying to keep you from the presence of God because without the presence, you cannot fulfill the purpose. And if you're not fulfilling the purpose, you have no power. And so what you're doing is walking every day as a defeated foe. Satan can beat you at anything. And so what happens is people get used to losing. They get numb to losing. And then all of a sudden they don't expect victory. They just say, well, at least I didn't get beat that bad. Man, I'm up here preaching, man. I'm just getting used to stuff we're not supposed to get used to. God's trying to help us reconnect with garden living. God's trying to help us to reconnect with Hearing his voice in the cool of the day. Come on, some of y'all need to just jump into a spiritual hammock. Dang, I just jump in there, man. I'm just, whew. This is good, man. I'm going to take me a nap. Right? The enemy's like, you, can't, you got too many things. No, 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 no. I don't have it. I really don't have anything to do. See, that's where God is trying to bring us. See, that's what happens in his presence. In his presence, man. God takes over and you get to benefit from his power. And so let's go to Matthew, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. I want to encourage you. Acknowledge where you are. And if you're not where you need to be, make your way back. And God will welcome you. And don't allow things that don't belong to you weigh you down. You were never equipped with enough strength to deal with it anyway. So we may as well get used to releasing everything to God and letting him have his way. Excuse me. I, I might have said uh, Mark, but I meant Matthew. Matthew 11. And then Matthew 11, um, 28. But you know what? I want to put this up. I got to remember my time. Let's put this up in the message translation. Matthew 11. Actually, just put it up in the King James. I'll read it real fast, then we'll go to message. Just in case some people don't have the message. All right. He says, come unto me. See that? So remember, 
Satan says, run. God says, come. Amen. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and what will he do? I will give you rest. Look at your neighbor and say, that, that sounds pretty good. Okay, let's take this and let's look at Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 in the message translation. Are you tired? Come on. See, you know, I can't make you do anything. God's not looking to make you do anything. Like he asked Adam, where are you? But he knew where he was. But the question was, can you guys close that door a little bit? Yeah, they're having a time over there. That's why we got to get that building over there. Amen. Praise God. But he knew where Adam was, but he asked him. And the reason he asked him was so that now Adam could, he had a chance to be honest. Yes. You have a chance to be honest. You can come to a church service like this and you can be honest with God. And the question here, if you put that back up there for me, please. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 in the message translation. Are you tired? Another question. Worn out. You see this? Burned out on religion. You know what? Religion, man, is, boy, that's like a, a hamster on that little running wheel. You're trying to chase something you can never catch because religion is man's attempt to reach up to God. Relationship that comes through Jesus is God reaching down to man. Amen. How many know I cannot run fast enough to catch God? But I can slow down enough to be caught by him. But the question is, are you tired? Worn out on religion. Then he says, come to me. Get away with me. And you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Next verse, please. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I mean, this stuff right here, man. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Well, that's the total opposite of what the world says, huh? The world is like, you need an answer, figure it out. God is saying, get away with me. The world is saying, stay up late. God is saying, let's rest. Y'all with me? And then he says, go back to the uh, verse 29, or whatever, the last, yeah, 29. He says, walk with me and work with me. Let's say that. Say, walk with God and work with God. Okay, now when I'm working with God, he says, watch what? Y'all want to see God do some stuff? Y'all want to see God fix some stuff? Come on, somebody, instead of us trying to figure it out, well, you know, let me walk with God. Glory to God, I'm with you. I'm in relationship, and I'm watching him work. Look at God. I mean, you'll see God do miracles. You'll see God turn situations around. You'll see God restore hope to people who almost have given up. You'll see God turn lives around to where you may have said, this one ain't going to make it, and God says, you watch. You just watch what I do. Watch what I do. See, if you walk with me and you work with me, then now you can see through the eyes of vision and not through the eyes of judgment. See, because God always sees potential. But if I'm not walking with God, I can't see as God sees. And so guess what? I get frustrated, disappointed. So I don't see no diamond. All I see is a lump of coal. Yeah. Y'all with me? But how are we going to get there? You got to, come on, walk with me. See? How are you going to get there? Uh, I need to pray more. No, no, no. Walk with me. How are you going? I need to confess more scripture. No, no. See? 
Walk, come on over here. Get close enough to me. And guess what? You get close enough, you'll start seeing my power. You'll start seeing, see, because if you do something and something changes, that's because you did it. That's your power. God said, that's good. Clap, clap, clap. But I have more. That's what it mean. You, you know, you know how to, you thought of something. Sometimes we think it's God and we say, God told me to do this. And, you know, but we never were still enough to really hear God. So we just busy, busy, busy. And God said, do this. And you're like, okay, okay. And you just running around. Okay, it's God. I'm just, you know, I'm fixing and building. I'm doing everything for the Lord. And God's like, I ain't told you to do nothing because you never rested. I speak to you when you're resting. We speak to ourselves when we're busy. Busyness produces busyness. So you always think of stuff to do. And you always say it's God. But it don't always turn out. Come on. Let me tell you something about God. His stuff always works. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now, when it's God, it just smooth. It just works, man. It just lines up everything, just boom, boom, comes together. When it's you, <laughs> you've been trying. You said, man, I know one thing. I'm, a, I'm about to get this square in this circle. That's what I need. I need a hammer. And so we're forcing things where they don't even belong. Because that's not God's plan. Never his intention. Amen. And so, as put that scripture back up there. I know they I keep going on, but um, so we learn the unforced rhythms of grace. This is God working without our effort. I won't lay anything uh, heavy or ill-fitting on you. Next verse. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely. And what? How many of y'all want to live freely and lightly? What's the prerequisite on that? Keep company with God. He says, keep company with me. Amen? Come on, because sometimes you go over people's house, you get the benefit from what's going on in their house. And sometimes, you know, if, if what ain't right is going on, then sometimes you're not benefiting from that. But how many know, keeping company with God is really good. Because what God has is what we all need and what we all want, and I'm ready to receive that. And so religion brings weariness, but relationship brings the anointing. See, if he's saying, you watch me work, you watch what I do, uh, what he says, something about that grace and, and the, the, the free rhythms. Can you put that up again? The unforced rhythms of grace. Unforced means you, you, you ever been there in your life where you're just trying to make something happen? Now, you know, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I got to get this done, man. You know, and I'm just, you know, just, you know. God is like, why don't you sit down? I just, man, I'm just moving and shaking. You know, I'm just, who you moving and shaking for? It ain't for me. You know, I'm just a doer, pastor. I'm in a doer and, you know, huh. Dang, man, them the ones you find broke down on the road. What happened? What happened to all you're doing? My engine conked out. Amen? Because you don't have enough strength to do that. And so we're supposed to see that, learn the unforced. See, as we were saying through uh, worship, how this come out that, you know, stop fighting these battles that's not yours. You guys may hear me uh, give a word of knowledge and stuff like that. That comes from the anointing. That's God flowing. And see, we, we sometimes spend ourselves kind of getting involved and, you know, we get stressed out on stuff that God's like, mm -mm. come close. And the thing that is compromised in this overly busy life is fellowship with God, which is the thing you need. It's the whole cool of the day experience that we don't experience anymore because we've allowed, what, our running. And next thing you know, we get weary in the running. And religion, and even if you become religious, all you're doing is trying to be something that God says, I'll be through you. So that's some religious people, they get all jacked up and, they, you know, they'd be tripping off of stuff that, you know what I'm saying? Like God could be about, be about ready to drop a nugget on you, man, an answer, and you'd be like, is that lint on the floor? Oh, I'm just disturbed. I just can't take it. 
And God is like, really? I was about to bombard you with revelation. Amen? Come on. You can't, you know, if a bug splats on your windshield, you ought not try to see, what's that a bee? Please don't do that while you're driving. Amen? Because you need to see the big picture. And this is what God wants from us. And this is what God is trying to help us. And so religion brings weariness, but relationships, relationship brings the anointing. The anointing comes from God. It's the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. That's what he brings, but he only brings that through relationship. Amen? Now, when this happens for you, this is when you'll be able to say, here I am, Lord. Come on, see, I, I don't have that much time to preach today, cause, but I had to pray for y'all, and, you know, just I had to give my worship experience myself, amen. So, But relationship will cause you to stop running from God, and you'll be with God, but it'll bring you to the place in your life where you say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Because relationship will move you beyond the place of what can they do for me? See, when you're running, you're looking for the next person that's got something for you. Come on. When you're running, when you're not in relationship and you're running, come on, you're running out there. Instead of letting God fix you, come on, somebody, you're looking for everybody else who got problems so that you can keep your eyes off your own problems. But also when you're running, when you're running out there, man, you're looking for the next fix. It's the next fix. It's the next one to come along that's got something for you that ain't going to fill the hole, but at least you can try. So it's never about what you can do and how you can help and how you can be a blessing. It's always about when you're running, it's always about what they got for me. Hmm? So what happens? You become real critical, man. You just, you know, you're not looking at what God can do through you. You're looking at what can come to me. Because I'm outside of his presence. And so guess what? I'm running around here with this gaping hole and I can't stand it. So I need to get something from somebody. But when I'm in his presence. Come on. When I'm walking with him, when I'm in relationship with him, I am not looking at, I don't need nobody to give me nothing, man. I'm in his presence. I got everything I need. I don't need nothing from no one anywhere because I'm in his presence. How I many know when you're full, you don't need nothing. And so you're not going around a church looking at what the church can do for you. You're not going around your family members, not looking at your job, talking about what they got for you. You don't do that. Why? Huh? I'm in his presence. Oh, so if I'm in his presence, then guess what? The anointing is released. It's the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. And so what that will do is relationship will cause you to cry out, here I am, Lord. Send me. You are not asking God to send you nowhere with that big gaping hole. But when you are in his presence and you're filled, you're like, oh, whew, glory to God, send me. I don't care where it is. But when you're running, everything, you got conditions, man. You got stipulations. You know, you got all this stuff, man. You know, well, God, you know, and you got all this stuff. You got, you want God to fill out a resume for you because you're running. But when you're in relationship, here I am, Lord. Hmm? Because you're full. You don't care what time it is. You're full. God can say, get up and go, go witness to people at Three in the morning, you say, let's go, Lord, because you're full. Amen? Amen? This is what God is looking to do. Now, I said that God wants to use you, but God's not going to use you on your terms. Dang. Huh? God's not going to use you on your terms. 
Well, you know, Lord, I'll do it if. Ain't no if. If you got ifs and buts, they're in the way. So he can't really use you. But now in, when you get in this relationship, this is what I'm encouraging everyone. When you get in this relationship, his presence cleanses. His presence heals. His presence delivers. And his presence empowers for purpose. His presence will take a nothing. His presence will take the world's trash. Come on. Build them up. Empower them. Get them ready to do something great. Go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. Don't ever become too busy for God's presence. Don't ever become too busy doing something for God that you missed God. Huh? What? Yeah. You were doing something for God but missed God in all of it. And so you were just busy. Don't allow that to happen. Now, it's his presence, it's his relationship, it's God's power that we need. And God will build up. He will build up and he will, like we said last week, he'll use the least likely. Because they need God's power. They need God's presence. If God doesn't do it, then it won't get done. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I'm a man of unclean lips. Have you ever, don't have to raise your hand, but have you ever maybe looked at yourself and was like, mm, I'm really not worthy. Especially when maybe, you know, you might hear God like saying something and like it's almost like he wants to use you for something great and you're like, mm -hmm. not me. Why? You have an excuse. He says, I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. I'm just a heathen in the middle of all these heathens. Amen? But let's, let's continue. It says, for my eyes have seen the king. Now, you just get that experience. That's why I'm encouraging you to go closer. It doesn't matter. You can experience God right there in that situation that you're in. Don't wait for your situation to change to go to God. Go to God in the midst of your situation and watch God's power change everything. Watch God lift you up. When you're in the midst of bad times, bad people, bad situations, watch God's power. If you could say, I just want your presence, God, that's all I want. I realize where I'm at and I'm lost and I want to come home. God will meet you there. Huh? God will meet you in, in the midst of your situation. But you want to acknowledge that. Amen. You want to acknowledge that. And then. Uh, verse six, then this is a, a vision here, but let me let me just continue. Then flew one of the seraphims unto uh, me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And I want you to catch this revelation here. Verse seven. And he laid it upon my mouth on whose mouth. But but let's look at it from a, a vision sample. What is the picture being painted here? Man of unclean lips. Maybe you've been one of unclean, have you? Oh, maybe you've been one of unclean lips. Maybe you've been one of not knowing what to do or not being able to qualify in your own eyes. But how many know God's got a coal of fire? <laughs> you know, we're trying to see the diamond in the rough, hey man. Like I said earlier, all I see is coal. Well now, glory to God, how about you see that as a coal of fire? Ooh, because God can take a coal of fire and put it on some unclean lips. What's about to burn up? It ain't about to be God's fire getting put out. Huh? See, this is what we need to get. See, we, because this stuff right here is going to get a hold of all kind of people. And God will be using the least likely. I mean, you could have been a cussing 
more man, what they call it, he cuts like a sailor, nothing against sailors, but I heard that somewhere, somebody said that. I wasn't in the military, but I heard, is that a true thing? Like some, cussing like a sailor, man, sailors must cuss. I heard that. But then, come on, God can drop that <clears throat> coal of fire on you and that cussing sailor and turn into a pastor. Are we in it for this? Are we in it for this? I told you last week we have transferable skills. God will use you, man. You used to be persuasive and all this kind of stuff. But, hey, religion ain't going to get you there. Religion ain't going to get you there. You know, it's going to be the power of God. It's going to be God touching you. Then flew one of the seraphims under him, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from, with tongues off the altar. And verse 7, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, lo, this has touched thy lips. What happened after that? Huh? Thy inequity is taken away. And thy sin is purged. God is looking to do this in people's lives. He will clean you up. Yes. And then he's going to use you, though. See, that's what I'm saying. See, he's not going to clean you up just so you can go to church and just be, you know, have your clean robe. I mean, all of us in this robe, you know, we got it together. Amen. Come on. You got the mature Christian section. That's a problem, man. The mature Christian section. Ain't nobody doing nothing for God because they, they don't, you know, when you're mature and you've made it and you've arrived in your own power, you're really not going to do anything for God. And if you do something, it's going to be what you thought you should do. But if, come on, I know God put that coal of fire on my lips. Man, I used to cuss with the best of them. And I never said, I'm going to stop saying that. Because that's the biggest mistake you can make. I'm, I'm about to stop saying that, man. Saying what? What you just said again? <laughs> oh, I'm about to next week. Get that next week, man. Next week, I'm going to have that together. Listen, let me tell you something. I used to speak like the world with confidence. Amen? I know God got that coal of fire on me, man. And... I know it's God because he put that coal of fire on me and the people that I used to cuss with, even being around them, they didn't, I wasn't influenced. It just, he just took it. It was just like one day he just said, well, you know, come on. Y'all don't want to admit it. You, most of y'all think Pastor Troy is a bully anyway. I already know. I've already been hearing, hearing no secrets. I know everybody thinks I'm a bully. So that's okay. But I ain't mad at you. I'm just telling you what God did for me. So, you know, most people, like a lot of people struggle today. You know, they'd be Christians and stuff and they still be cussing and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I ain't mad at you. I'm not trying to say, you know, they told on you. I don't know. I'm just telling you what happened to me. I didn't, that didn't happen to me like that. He just put that coal of fire on my lips and my conversation, everything changed. Amen. Could he do that for others? But let's see, why did he have to do that? Well, you think he did that for me so that I can be a mature churchgoer? So, you know, I don't cuss. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't even eat shrimp. I heard somebody say, you're not supposed to eat shrimp because that's just the bottom feet. I don't care, man. The shrimp tastes good sometimes. I'm just saying. Like, why we got to get into all that? Hey, dang, man. You know, people will be coming up with all this kind of stuff. But anyway, must be getting hungry. But yeah, because I just had a flash of some ribs. You know how people be, <laughs> you know how they tell you, you know what I mean? They tell you don't eat pork, man. Hey, man, I'm just saying. Pork ribs taste better than beef ribs. I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> Only thing I can remember about beef ribs is they get in my teeth. Yeah. And you know what? The cold thing about it is the bone is so big and the meat is small. <laughs> Man, you get that big old rack, you know. This is Fred Flintstone, Brontosaurus ribs. Blam. 
in one bite and the meat is gone. <laughs> it must be time to eat. But listen, <laughs> all those things don't really matter. You know what I mean? That, that, like, okay, like, like, I ain't trying to be mean with people and stuff like that. But just imagine this. If you have abandoned, you know, you don't eat shrimp, you don't eat ribs, you don't eat all that stuff, but you still cussing like a sailor. I don't know what's really going on. <laughs> hey Amen. So what I'm saying is that coal of fire, God put it on me. Look here. It took away the cussing, but it didn't mess up my taste buds. I still like, you know, I, the coal of fire burnt off the cussing, but I still, you know, got the taste buds, man. So I still enjoy eating. I think that's quite beneficial. Amen. But you don't get that through religion. You only get that through relationship. Come on, religion says bow and pray and lay out and do all this stuff. Come on, you know you got all these things and you got to pay, pray like 85 times a day, do all this stuff. And God said, come over here and walk with me. Lord, I can't walk because I'm praying. We don't have to lay no mats out and do all that stuff. I better get a hold of God. Well, you could be walking. I'm getting more revelation. Glory to God, you laying out on that mat and I'm getting revelation walking with God. And when you get up off that mat, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that. But this is so available to us today. I say we ought to take advantage of it. I say we ought to let God's power touch us. And then he says, thine inequity is taken away. It's one thing when you call yourself giving up your sin. It's another thing when it's, ooh. So when you give up your sin, come on, you can take it back. But if your sin is taken, then it's like, I got this now. That's what God did for me. Took it away. Just took it. I ain't get on no, you know, I'm not ashamed to say it. Hey, I got beautiful kids. They've never seen me intoxicated. Never. My youngest is 17. Oh, but I had plenty of days. <laughs> Glory to God. I had plenty of times, plenty of days. Amen? So how could that happen? Only God. They, my kids never heard me running through the house cussing out their mama. They ain't never heard it. They're like, cussing? What? <laughs> How'd that happen? Coal of fire. Come on, can I get an amen? I'm just, I'm just, you know, we're going to close in a minute, but I'm just telling a coal of fire. Glory to God, a coal of fire. Touch your lips and all your inequity is burned up. If it's burned up, if your sin's taken away, you're not going to struggle with it. You're not going to be backsliding. I'm not going to backslide into something that got taken away from me. I don't have a road map back there anymore. It's been taken. I can't speak those old words because the coal of fire got on me. But the coal of fire ain't going to come if you don't enter into relationship. If you stay out there with that mental ascent and trying to be a good old goody two shoes, then you're going to be good while we looking. But then guess what? You're going to slip. And it really wasn't a slip. See, we call it a slip. Oh, I slipped, messed up. No, you didn't. You just acted like who you are. <laughs> you just returned to your true self. You took your church clothes off. Dang, pastor, you mean. No, no, I want you to get the coal of fire. Glory to God, I want the coal of fire to touch your lips because God will touch you and clean you up, amen, and then use you. He ain't going to clean you up just for you to be a clean saint in the church. He's going to clean you up so that now he can use you to reach this world. How many of y'all want to be used by God? Come on. God is looking to use us. And it's not going to be what we can do. It's not about ability. It's about availability. Come on, brother. I know you. you sometimes you got to help me out, man. Just you might just start walking up there, you know. Start playing something because pass it, man. He's getting on a roll. 
He know, he know we got to get these chairs there. Come on. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> All right, Pastor. I'll write you with you, but. <laughs> yeah. Come on. So God wants to touch you. And it's never going to be what you can do for God. It's going to be what can God do through you. John 14, 10, the father does the work. The father is going to be the one that's doing the work. The father is doing the work in Pastor Troy. The father brings transformation. See, I know what that coal of fire can do because I've experienced it. Oh, I'm not this pastor that grew up untouched by the world. And then, because there's some people in religion and they even, I think even Vanilla Ice tried to fake it. He said he was in the hood. Then they found out, brother, you didn't grow up in no hood. But I really did experience life without God. I really experienced life as a knucklehead. And I saw what God can do. And I know that that same God will touch you. But it's just, you got to be willing. You just got to trust him. And remember, it's going to come through relationship. It's not going to come through how many Bible verses you know. It's not going to come through anything like, it's going to come through relationship. Remember, the enemy says, run. But God says, come. Are you tired? Are you weary? Are you worn out? He says, come. Now he's going to give you rest. He's going to bring a peace that surpasses all understanding. It's going to comfort your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Just lift your hands right there in your chairs. Father, bless this, your people. Father, bless those that are watching right now. Bless them. Touch them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you didn't come to condemn us. But you came that we would find and have life and have it more abundantly and experience it in the earth. We thank you for it right there. So God says, where are you? So in the privacy of your heart, tell him, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to get back on track. I'm ready to go all the way. I'm ready to be touched by your power and your presence. Thank you, Lord. Here I am. Use me. Use me, Lord. In whatever way you see fit, use me. Release your power. Release that fire off the altars of heaven. Let it touch lives right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We believe in the power. We believe in the touch. So God brings deliverance, and then he wants to use you. He wants to use you in a mighty way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We pray right now. If you're in this place and you've never said yes to the Lord, listen, this is not me enticing you to enter into religion. This is about a relationship that's going to transform your life. All you have to do to say yes to the Lord. If you're here and you say, pray for me, Pastor, I need to connect with God like that. I need to receive that relationship. Maybe you're at home and that's you. God says, I'm here for you. So let's repeat this prayer. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand to your feet, amen. God's got special things in store for you. He's gonna use you, amen. Come on, you are special. You are valuable to God. But you got to see it. You got to know it. How many of y'all believe that the anointing is for you? Can I get amen right there? Come on. Anybody say the anointing is for me. I'm, you know what? Glory to God. Come on. Who got the anointing on? Who got the anointing on? See? 
There it is. There it is. You got it. You got it. Before we leave, trust me on this. This is powerful. Everybody come up here. Come up. Y'all section right here. Come right here. Stay right there. Right there. Come on. Right there. Right there. Come on. You guys come right here in the middle. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's move. Let's move. Come on. You right there. Your group over there. Come on. Come on. Right here. This is a group right here. All right. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Now, I need everybody to turn to somebody and start praying for them. Come on, just take a minute. I, you said you got the anointing. Pray on them. Come on, speak a destiny over their lives. Cancel the plans of the devil against them. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing being released in this place. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There it is. There it is. Come on. Help them, Lord. Yeah. Help them, Lord. Amen. Now y'all take turns. Y'all pray for each other. Both people pray. The other person pray now. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Power, power, power. We have it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's clap for the Lord. Amen. Come on, clap for the Lord. See? God loves you, and you all love each other, and God's got a wonderful destiny in store for everyone in this place. Amen. Come on. God's got a wonderful destiny in store for everyone in this place. Amen. Come on, look at your name and say, you are a chosen vessel. Amen. Tell three people on the way out, you are a chosen vessel. If you can get back to your seats, Brother Eric, I don't know if you got the mic, but come on up. Amen. Come on, clap for Jesus in this place. Amen. Tell three people, you are a chosen vessel on your way out. Amen. Amen. Uh, God is just really pouring out on us. And it's just amazing week to week. Uh, I mean, just seeing what God is doing in this place. Feeling the shift this morning, Lord God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands toward heaven this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you for, for blessing us to be here today, Lord Jesus. Lord God, what a powerful time we've had this morning, Lord Jesus. The many things that you've done, the prayers that you've answered, Lord God, the things that you've done for your children that have chosen to put you first this morning, Lord God. Bless these, your people, Lord God. Bless them as they go to their individual homes, Lord God. Help them to stay in your word, Lord Jesus, throughout the week, Lord God, and bring them back at your appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen.